Oh no, Intel's in fire. We're just they're on fire. They're in dire financial straits. The sky's falling. The stock price is the worst that it's been in 30 years. Intel doesn't have the products that the market wants. Yeah, it's it's overblown. Those are Wall Street bros manipulating things. I'm not sure that Wall Street is connected in any way to reality anymore. We, we had everything before us. We have nothing before us now. But Intel Xeon 6 is launching and Gaudi 3, and I'm just back from a visit to Intel in Portland. And boy, do I have some thoughts. <laughs> Okay, okay, let's chat. Intel Xeon 6 for server and Intel Gaudi 3 for AI are the crown jewels of the most ambitious engineering we've seen from Intel in a decade. And these products are entering availability shortly. You know, Intel's saying we're bringing things to market a little ahead of schedule. It's pretty wild. It's a result of more than three years of nose to the grindstone engineering with a completely different approach to product than Intel has taken in an age. An epoch, if you will. Just over a month ago, I reviewed Sierra Forest. May the forest be with you. And with this product, I was raised, you know, my eyebrow. Hyperscalers really sort of want this. It's a, it's 144 cores and an 8 memory channel platform. That's the Xeon 6700 platform. But it was only available with e-cores. And my eyebrow was raised because it was actually good. But this, this is what's coming now. This is the 12 channel configuration, the 6900 series Xeons. Those are P-cores. 128 of them, 500 watts per socket. This is the performance crown jewel. The other one was the density and performance per watt crown jewel. And memory, memory is one big differentiator that Intel sees itself having in the market here. Intel is moving up the supported memory speeds a lot for one DIMM per channel configurations. They also support something called multiplex rank and DIMMs. Multiplex, 8800, what an incredible leap forward in speed. It's really like two DIMMs on one PCB. Yeah, with some slightly different clock geometry. I mean, 8800 sounds amazing, but a multiplex. Really just two 4400 uh, dims on one physical package. It's about 30% faster real-world scenario. So think of it like two dims on one PCB that can clock together, clock independently. 8800 mega transfers. It's a little different. Intel offers another route to high memory capacities, and that's CXL. Some benchmarking they showed off with ILM and a system that had about one and a half terabytes of DDR5 and three quarters of a terabyte of DDR4. That was only 3% slower than a system fully outfitted with 2.25 gigabytes of DDR5. And you got to have a smart memory controller to pull that off. That's not much of a performance loss at all. That's it's actually... It's a kind of mind-blowing. That's without NUMA in there either. I mean, if your OS is smart, you can use CXL devices uh, as a memory tier, but only 3% performance loss on ILM is impressive without having to resort to any of that. And that is thousands and thousands of dollars off the cost of one system. So imagine the savings across a data center. It's a lot to be excited about with the new platform launches. And yes, Intel is doing P cores for the 6700 socket as well in case 128 cores is overkill. Now, one thing that was absent from their roadmap, and that was single socket configurations. Is Intel going to offer a discount in single socket configurations? Because 128 P cores, single socket, that's, that's what a lot of people need at this point. I mean, they don't need two sockets where you could get 128 performance cores. And just to be clear, what's launching today is the Intel Xeon 6900P. That's P cores. So right now you have the 6700 platform with E cores as a choice and the 6900 platform with P cores as a choice. But coming Q1 of 2024 is E cores on the 6900 platform and P cores on the 6700 platform, up to 288 Sierra Forest cores per socket in that 12 memory channel platform. And I sort of called around. I mean, the 6700E has been out for a little while. I've got hands on one. I've done real world workloads, very impressive. But you know, it doesn't matter what I say if customers aren't buying it. And from what I hear from my contacts inside of large system manufacturers, there are actually a lot of customers interested in this platform or have been satisfied with their test workloads to the extent that these partners that build motherboards and systems around these processors uh, didn't build enough. So that's encouraging. It's very, very encouraging to see folks say, wow, it, Intel is shattering the way that they used to do their work in Xeon and server space. They're thinking about stuff in terms of new paradigms, and these products could not get here fast enough. E cores for efficiency, P cores for performance. Also in Intel's press material, hex mode. What is hex mode? Hex mode is making the entire CPU act as if it is one NUMA node. 
Now, some software is not really designed to deal with that. 128p cores in one Newman node, it's madness. But Intel has hex mode that they call for that. But you can also still do subnuma clustering. Subnuma clustering is a common Xeon feature. Subnuma clustering, you turn that on and you can get three NUMA domains because there's three compute tiles on the P-Core 6900. And yeah, it gives you three NUMA domains. 128 doesn't divide evenly into three. Can't wait to go hands-on. Now, as for Gaudi 3 and the AI side of it, AI is where the money is. It's looking promising. Intel's focusing on inferencing performance and focusing on corporate wins where they can get them with certain kinds of workloads. Corporate workloads where the customer doesn't know or care about which flavor of linear algebra is happening under the hood, such as with IBM. The end customer doesn't care about CUDA, is not looking for CUDA compatibility. They just want to run their AI stuff. And IBM was here at Intel's event in Portland. And, you know, they really complimented Intel's process in working with them hand in hand to come up with the perfect AI cloud product. Intel and AI and IBM in the cloud. Well, yeah, and that's an opportunity for Intel developers to learn. See, fact is, Intel still has more software developers on staff than just about any other company in this space and processor development and everything else. And Intel software devs are their shot. I mean, it's Intel's shot at differentiating itself competitively. I mean, Intel's devs are basically going to be responsible for carrying Intel into a new era of competition. Now, don't get me wrong. Xeon 6 is hugely important in the AI workload for gluing the AI stuff together. I mean... Xeon 6 is definitely not going away. It's just that in a line go up kind of a world, the types of silicon that can do AI is uh, more closely connected to the money spigot. So that's more Gaudi 3 than Xeon 6. It looks pretty easy to deploy a 32 node Gaudi system for basically any business. It's a pretty standard layout that doesn't require proprietary interconnect technology. And Intel's plan is that they can leverage their software team and the software stack to run both an internal large language model as well as a customer service large language model and be cryptographically assured that no data can leak from one of those workloads into the other, which is a bit of a problem right now with AI workloads. And of course, that is a Gaudi based solution. But all of this is running locally, or maybe at the edge, but I have a feeling the promise functionality here around the secure isolation is part of what IBM has in mind to use Gaudi for their cloud offerings for IBM customers. One of the interesting things that Intel showed in their AI workload slides was that just using Xeon, the new Xeon 6, as a platform to carry NVIDIA GPUs will uplift the performance of the NVIDIA GPUs because the GPUs don't spend all their time just GPUing. They have to be fed by data. That's PCIe, that's memory, that's interconnect speed. And if you look at what Intel has done for their Gaudi 3 architecture, those internal changes to Xeon in terms of being the heart of this machine will feed other platforms just as well. So by building a cohesive solution, they're not able to sort of ignore what other customers will require in terms of PCIe connectivity, in terms of CXL compatibility, in terms of networking platform, 200 gigabits and two channels for their own inter internal Gaudi 3 translate to real world network and DMA transfers. And so that looks good no matter what sort of AI platform you're building with Xeon CPUs at the heart of it. CPUs are not enough, but while CPUs by themselves are not enough, if the CPU is not good enough, it will also be a little bit of a bottleneck. I mean, the joke is you could hang an H100 off of a TI-92 and probably sell that on the internet, but the reality is you're still leaving some performance on the table if you do that. Yes, TI-92, the graphing calculator. Now let's be clear here, Intel is focusing on AI inferencing performance. They're not giving up anything on the AI, although some of those Wall Street bros have widely misreported that Intel is giving up on AI. Intel cannot give up on AI because that's where the money spigot is. And Gaudi 3, focusing on inferencing, I think is a good move for Intel. 2x, close to 2x, a little bit better than 2x, the H100 inferencing performance is huge. If that were in the market six months ago, or even three months ago, or even a month ago, then Intel would have tons of wins, I think, if the software stack and everything else is ready to go. Me, I want to go hands-on with this and see how it actually stacks up. But the slides look promising, as well as what IBM was saying, because IBM has kicked the tires on this, and it does look pretty interesting from what they said. For the other performance Intel showing, their performance slides looks pretty good, whether you're running general compute or AI. But again, what's going to matter is hands-on, your specific workload, the specific things you want to see. You want your specific stuff to run fast. And as a competitive differentiator, 
Intel does have AMX. Intel is able to do certain types of AI workloads actually on the CPU and have reasonable performance. If you are uh, what Intel calls sort of at the frontier with what you're doing for your AI workloads, chances are you're not even in GPU territory yet. You're working on-prem, you're working with other sorts of experimental libraries, and chances are that's going to be a CPU-bound application, at least until you figure it out, at least until you sit down and start optimizing for what can actually run on a GPU. And a CPU is still the best place for really general-purpose compute. Now, I'll soon be hands-on with an Intel Xeon 6 with P-Cores in the new socket and format, but so far, it looks like it's going to be a much stronger performance product than Intel has had in years. The very high end, but still very power efficient. And that looks like it's going to be well positioned to complement Intel Xeon 6 Sierra Forest with the E-Cores. At the same time, AMD has got a chip launch coming up soon. I mean, it's got to be soon, right? The next five to ten years... It's going to be unlike anything the world has ever seen. And I'm here for it, and I'm pretty excited. I'm one of this level one. If you want to run a workload or let me know what kind of workloads I should be running on these systems, what you want to see. I mean, I just got done with Garage. It's a plug-in, drop-in, S3 replacement, S3 compatible. And that runs like a dream on the Xeon 6 Sierra Forest E-Cores system, 6700. So if you want to replace your own you know, S3 with something that's self-hosted or use it as a as a backup target or whatever, but it's you know self-hosted, distributed in your own cloud, self-managed, whatever. That's a pretty reasonable solution. But that's a video for another day. I'm Wendell's Level 1. I'm signing out, and you can find me in the Level 1 forums.